into what I have heard claims to be the windiest point in Europe. I don't even know how they measure that, but apparently that's its claim to fame. So this is the end, like the tip of the southern tip of Westman Island, or like the inhabited island. And um, this is where the puffins hang out. And it's the end of August, so the puffins have just left. So we're not gonna see puffins, but um, this is where they would be. And it's gonna be windy, because it's a very windy day today. This is when we bundle up and we just say, gotta go. Here we go. Getting close to the edge of the cliff here. All right. After nesting on the cliff sides of Iceland, puffins migrate back out to sea where they will live for the rest of the year. But baby puffins can get distracted, end up flying back onto land, and get trapped in the streets and around buildings because they can't fly away by themselves. That's when the locals spring into action. Icelanders rescue these little pufflings, gather them up into cardboard boxes, drive out to the nearest cliff, and toss them off the cliff so they can rejoin their colony. You can see that this is truly a family affair and it was such a cool thing for us to be a part of. wind blow <laughs> that was windy man wow okay didn't expect to see puffins thought they'd be gone it's the last day of august and typically when we've been out looking for puffins this late in the year puffin season they've been already gone luckily we saw and they were great as always they're just so cute i mean they're just they just they're just so dang cute and the scenery out here is incredible like it's magical you know it's just magical so is this my favorite place to see puffins no but it's a really good place to see them and definitely like a cherry on the top of our westman islands visit so i love it happy happy lady right now
Come with me to try sea urchin in Iceland. In the heart of the Westman Islands is a true culinary gem called Slipbrun. If the words local and sustainable are music to your ears, this restaurant is gonna be your foodie paradise. I have to say, when I saw a sea urchin on the menu, I wasn't sure what to expect, but it was out of this world. It was sourced from a diver that morning and garnished with capers and horseradish. For appetizers, we also had crispy cod skin with smoked roe and salted kohlrabi with pickled onion. The flavors were incredible. For mains, we had cod with a cream sauce and apple fennel salad, as well as the lamb topped with hazelnuts and au jus. And their mashed potatoes were the best I've ever had in my life. Of course, we had to wash it all down with some craft cocktails. This gimlet was so delicious, they even had a booklet detailing the local herbs that each cocktail was infused with. And we couldn't leave without indulging in a bit of dessert. My favorite was the skier granita with caramel and roasted oats. <clears throat> the ferry got canceled. The weather's still terrible. And um, yeah, I mean, like the storm is crazy. A lot of wind, rain on and off, but the sea is very angry. We're back at the campground and um, we are hopeful for a 7 a.m. ferry, but we are not optimistic. Good morning from our camper van. We're on the Westman Islands and it is officially autumn and the first storm of the season hit last night and that makes the sea extremely rough uh, and since we're on an island off of an island the boat back and forth situation gets really interesting this is always a possibility like for your information anyone that's traveling from the westman islands and back to the mainland or vice versa you always have to be aware that with inclement weather comes the alternative ferry route. So instead of taking a short 35 minute ferry from Vestmanaer to Landerhub, which is the ferry terminal on the mainland right by Seljulandsfoss, instead they reroute the ferry to Thorlaxhub, which is a three hour ferry ride. No one likes to change their travel plans. You know, so I'm not the only one in this situation and, and it's not the only time that we've been in a situation like this, but it's never fun. So basically what that means is they have given us the opportunity to just take the ferry that heads out next. One thing I liked is that they emailed us last night. We knew the storm was coming in, but they emailed us last night and said, just so you know, there's a possibility that we're going to have to go to the other harbor. Well, uh, email you for sure in the morning because of course the weather could change. They emailed us right away. I called them right at 7 a.m. and they said that my option is to take the five o'clock ferry. All right, so the reason this is unfortunate is because we're gonna be getting back to land super late. Happy Campers closes at five. And so they usually like to have you drop off the van while they're there just because it helps with like their uh, cleaning and turnover process. We're gonna miss that deadline. So you, they do have drop off off hours, which is what we're gonna have to take advantage of this time. So a key drop. The last way this has impacted our day is that um, now we just need to find something else to do. Again, not a big deal. 
but um, we had spent the last three days on the island and like doing all the things, knowing that we were gonna probably head on the noon ferry today. Now that we have a five o'clock ferry, you have a lot more hours to fill. Right now, for example, my husband and son are in the swimming pool for the third time this weekend. And after that, we'll probably just grab a bite to eat and then do um, one more museum. If the weather wasn't so bad, we would be doing things outside like taking tours and going back to the park and you know taking more hikes around, but it's, it's not been the greatest weather weekend, so what can you do?